Welcome back to Science Click. Today, the Coriolis Force. In our universe, objects naturally move in a straight line at a constant speed. When an object does not experience any force, it has no reason to turn or change speed and will therefore conserve its motion. Looking towards the future, we can suppose that one day humans will make long journeys through space. For astronauts to survive for several months, we will certainly have to design spaceships that simulate gravity, since our bodies are used to it on Earth. One of the simplest solutions and the most promising is the idea of a centrifuge. A large spinning wheel in which the centrifugal force would repel astronauts outwards, giving them a feeling of gravity. Let us first try to understand the origin of the centrifugal force which holds the astronaut against the edge. To do this, we just need to observe the situation from the outside. When the wheel spins, it carries the astronaut with its movement. If he takes a ball in his hand, the ball describes a circle because it is held by the astronaut. But if the astronaut drops the ball, it is no longer subject to any force and it will therefore conserve its motion and move in a straight line until bouncing off the edge. From our point of view, the ball has simply followed a straight line. But for the astronaut, the ball seems to have fallen towards the edge. He feels like there is an imaginary force, the centrifugal force. It is important to understand that the centrifugal force is not really a physical force. When observed from the outside, we understand that the ball has not undergone anything. Once released, it is no longer in contact with the astronaut and it therefore moves straight ahead. But by observing the ball while spinning, the astronaut has the impression that there is an additional, fictitious force, the centrifugal force, which he invents to explain the motion of the ball in his frame of reference. Now imagine that the astronaut throws the ball upwards. Like before, once released, the ball travels in a straight line until reaching the edge of the wheel. But for the astronaut, the ball leaves his hand, falls back down due to the centrifugal effect, but it also seems to deviate slightly as it lands in front of his feet. If he throws it higher, the ball falls even further. From his point of view, the centrifugal force alone is not enough to describe the motion of the ball. He must invent another fictitious force which would deflect the ball as it moves through the air, the Coriolis force. To understand the Coriolis force, let's look at the situation from the outside. When the wheel spins, each point follows a circle. These circles are faster when the point is far from the centre because it must travel a greater distance. When the astronaut holds the ball in his hand, it follows one of these circles with the appropriate speed. But when he throws the ball upwards, it gets closer to the axis of rotation. Here, it should move slower to follow the wheel, but since it has conserved its initial motion, the ball moves faster than the wheel, and it will therefore edge ahead and eventually fall in front of the astronaut. By throwing the ball upwards, the astronaut brought it closer to the axis of rotation. Here, the ball moves faster than the wheel and will therefore edge ahead, which seems to deflect it from the astronaut's viewpoint. Moreover, the astronaut himself experiences the Coriolis effect in his own body. His head being close to the centre, his feet move faster. He feels the spin and risks nausea and loss of balance. If we wish to use this type of centrifuge in the future, we will therefore have to build one large enough so that the Coriolis effect is negligible for the passengers. Like the centrifugal force, the Coriolis force appears when we observe a situation while spinning. It can be in a centrifuge, but also on a carousel, 
or even at the scale of our entire planet. Indeed, the Earth spins on itself once every day. On its surface, we are driven by its rotation, and the objects that are close to the poles move slower than those close to the equator. The Coriolis effect hence applies at the scale of the planet. For instance, if we launch a projectile into the atmosphere, due to the fact that the Earth rotates underneath, the trajectory it traces on the surface appears to be curved. Like the ball in the centrifuge, the projectile moves straight ahead, but when we measure it from the surface, which spins, its path seems distorted. The Coriolis effect also applies to the motion of air in the atmosphere and explains why hurricanes spin in one direction in the northern hemisphere and in the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere. The air that circulates near the equator moves faster than the air closer to the poles. When the winds drift away from the equator, they conserve their initial speed and therefore get ahead of the Earth's spin. This difference of speed results in a rotating motion, explaining the direction in which hurricanes spin. Still on Earth, the Coriolis effect also affects our perception of weight. The centrifugal force, due to the fact that the Earth spins, has the effect of repelling us and acting against gravity, slightly reducing our weight. If the Earth was spinning faster, the central fugal force would be stronger and we would be lighter. If the planet turned slower, the central fugal force would be weaker and gravity would feel more intense. Now imagine a train running at the equator. As the train advances towards the east, it moves in the same direction as the Earth's spin. Its motion adds up to that of the surface and overall the train moves faster, it experiences a stronger centrifugal force, and thus by moving eastwards, the train is lighter than at rest. Conversely, if the train moved westwards, its speed would go against the Earth's spin. The centrifugal force would thus be weaker for the train, it would be heavier than at rest. This strange phenomenon is called the Erdvush effect. It is a special case of the Coriolis effect which shows us that the weight of objects on Earth depends on how they move. To conclude, the Coriolis force is not a real force. It is an inertial effect that appears when we measure a trajectory from a spinning point of view. When an object moves in a rotating frame of reference, it seems to undergo a force which gradually curves its motion. Studying the Coriolis effect as a force makes it possible to understand motions in a centrifuge, ballistic trajectories in the atmosphere, the circulation of winds and hurricanes, or even the weight of an object moving on Earth. But the Coriolis effect also helps understand the vibrations of certain molecules the flight techniques used by certain insects, the existence of points of stability in the solar system, and the horseshoe-shaped orbits of certain asteroids. We can even describe how fluids and vortices behave within protoplanetary disks in which new exoplanets form, and accretion disks that surround supermassive black holes. <laughs>